Against the intrusion Kaido, we will be using a treasure map Cavendish team. Ideally, I would have another Cavendish as my friend captain, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find one, and I can't use the one the game provides, because it doesn't have max limit break. So we're gonna take the next best thing, which is V2 Katakuri. Now with V2 Katakuri, we are going to have to take some damage in the second stage. Which kind of slows us down. But it doesn't really bother us. It's gonna be like three or four turns in the earlier stages. When your navigation level gets higher, maybe maybe two turns will be enough. I think that's fine already. Kaido on stage two will give us a chain lock for eight turns. Other than that, he won't do anything special. On stage three... Kaido will get an immunity for 99 turns. He will also always start on 590,000 HP. That will not change no matter what your navigation level is. What is going to increase is his max health. When Kaido dies, he's going to revive that full HP. And he is going to get a damage negating shield for one turn and also double his attack for 99 turns. If I had an, a friend Cavendish here, I would use his special right now to get a type boost and an orb boost, but since I don't, I'm going to use the Katakuri special to do some damage. Kyra is going to revive, get that shield, get that attack boost. He's also going to change our orbs into badly matching every single turn. And at the same time, he's going to clear away all damage reducing buffs. So if you have a multi-turn uh, damage reducer, let's say Colosseum Shiryu, He's gonna clear away that buff after he has attacked. So you will get a one turn of damage reduction. After that, it's it's gone. We're gonna use actually we're gonna use Cavendish first to get those matching orbs. Type boost and an orb boost. After that, we're gonna clear away the chain lock with Colosseum NL special and change it to a chain boost. After that, we're gonna use Raid Blackbeard to clear away the damage nullification. Last, we're going to use Zoro to get a color affinity for slashers and driven characters. Always when using Cavendish team, Remember, remember to hit with your three Psy characters first and in this case remember to hit with Zoro last because he kind of has a double color affinity boost one from himself and one from the Katakuri Barto can basically be replaced with anyone you can take another character that reduces the rainbow shield. No, what rainbow shield? That's Jack. Uh, you can take a health cutter. Basically, any side character works. 
Barto just came to my mind for some reason, I don't know. So, first hit with our Psy characters, then with the other ones, and if Kaido had enough health, I would have hit him with Zoro. If you leave Kaido alive under 20%, he will blow away four random characters, which can include your captains. But other, th other than that, a pretty easy, pretty easy stage. Against Drake, we'll be using Treasure Map Mihawk team. X Drake is probably the easiest one out of all the mini bosses. His only real problem is that he will empty our orbs preemptively. Which is why we have our Count Nivatori on the team. Because Nivatori will change empty orbs into matching. We also have Colosseum Smoothie to eventually give us a color affinity boost. When Drake dies, he will inflict damage equal to half of his attack. He also has a special interrupt, where if you use a type boost, he will clear away all buffs, and he will boost his own attack for three turns. This also affects his on death damage. So if you have used a type boost and kill Drake, his damage will increase with that attack boost. So against Drake, in the beginning, our specials alone will be enough to kill him. We'll use Niwatori to get matching orbs, Mihawk to get a orb boost and a chain lock, and we will be using Smoothie to get a color affinity boost. As you can see, the specials alone are plenty enough to kill him, and his damage will only be 2000, so it will take forever for that damage to actually rack up and cause us problems. For my own team, I will be using a Inuarashi team because his 6 plus will actually be sort of useful with his enhanced tap timing bonus. Against Sheep's Head, we will be using Treasure Map Ace Team. Sheep's Head will preemptively change color to strength, which will make bringing quick characters extremely important. I will actually have to stall a little bit for my specials to get ready. Sheep's head will also lower our chain to 0.1 for 9 turns. It will also gain immunity for 99 turns. And if you don't manage to kill Sheep's head on the first turn, he will gain a damage threshold for 4 turns and will gain an end of turn damage buff for 99 turns. Yeah, this is probably enough. If you leave Sheep's Head under 20% health, he will lower your crew's attack by 90% for 3 turns. So 
So ideally, you don't want to leave him alive after the first turn. Otherwise, it will take you a little bit longer to get rid of him. He doesn't really do any damage based on health. He will just give you some annoying debuffs. So yeah, Sheep's Head will change color, gain immunity, and lower our chain. So we are going to use our Raid Hancock to lock our chain to 2.5 by passing that 0.1 chain lowering. After that, we're going to use our Zoro special to get color affinity boost for our slashers and drivens. Lastly, we're going to use our A special to get matching orbs and a type boost. Easy cakes. For a Kainu, you can replace him with a Slim Slim Vapol, I think it was his name, to get another unit with a driven class so that Zoro's color affinity will boost him. Other choice would probably be the new treasure map booster Apu. But if you're gonna go with free to play way then the Vapol is probably your choice. On my team I will be using a V3 Sabo team. Instead of Hancock special, I will be using Sabo's own special to get that chain lock. And then a bunch of quick units with some powerful boosts. Against Sheep's Head, we will be using Treasure Map Ace Team. Sheep's Head will preemptively change color to strength. which will make bringing quick characters extremely important. I will actually have to stall a little bit for my specials to get ready. Sheep's Head will also lower our chain to 0.1 for 9 turns. He will also gain immunity for 99 turns. And if you don't manage to kill Sheep's Head on the first turn, he will gain a damage threshold for 4 turns and will gain an end of turn damage buff for 99 turns. Yeah, this is probably enough. If you leave Sheep's Head under 20% health, he will lower your crew's attack by 90% for 3 turns. So ideally, you don't want to leave him alive after the first turn. Otherwise, it will take you a little bit longer to get rid of him. He doesn't really do any damage based on health. He will just give you some annoying debuffs. So yeah, Sheep's Head will change color, gain immunity, and lower our chain. So we are going to use our Raid Hancock to lock our chain to 2.5 by passing that 0.1 chain lowering. After that, we're going to use our Zoro special to get color affinity boost for our slashers and drivens. Lastly, we're going to use our A special to get matching orbs and a type boost. Easy cakes. For a Kainu, you can replace him with a Slim, Slim Vapol, I think it was his name, to get another unit with a driven class 
so that Zoro's color affinity will boost him. Other choice would probably be the new treasure map booster Apu, but if you're gonna go with free-to-play way, then the Vapol is probably your choice. On my team, I will be using a B3 Sabo team instead of Hancock special, I will be using Sabo's own special to get that chain lock. And then a bunch of quick units with some powerful boosts. Against Doflamingo, we will be using Treasure Map Law Team with some bind-reducing support in Fortnite Festival Nami. Doflamingo will preemptively bind my top, I'm sorry, bottom row for 10 turns, with max sockets that will be reduced to 7, with a double law team, with the two law specials I can reduce those binds down to 3, and then Nami will take care of the rest. After that it's only pretty much to activate our Big Mom special to get G orbs and all sorts of buffs on our team. If you want to, you can use the treasure map shanks to get matching orbs to further increase your damage. But for a whole while it doesn't it's not required. If you somehow manage to leave Dofi alive after first turn, he will seal your right side orbs for three turns, and he will give your left side block orbs and will lock all orbs for three turns. If you leave him under 50% health, he will silence your crew for three turns and will also boost his own defense for five turns. If you leave him under 20%, then he will bind your entire team for 15 turns. If you remember Raid Hancock, she also does a similar thing if you leave her on a low HP. So, we're gonna use our law specials to reduce our cooldowns and to get rid of that bind. Nami will get rid of the last Three turns of bind. And then Big Mom to give us our buffs. And we'll use our shanks to get some matching orbs. This works. Bam! Easy stuff. I personally will be using a Big Mom team. I don't even really have to use the specials if I have used Big Mom special on the previous turn. But this is a perfectly good free-to-play way to do it. Against Caesar, we will be using a treasure map whitebeard team with a 6 plus Nekomamushi friend captain. <coughs> <coughs> Nekomamushi plays a big part on this team since he is going to clear away 
the debuffs that we're gonna get from stage 6. On stage 6 there will be a dragon. When the dragon dies, it's going to bind two random sailors for two turns and also lower our attack for five turns. And once we enter the actual final stage, Nekomamushi will be able to clear those debuffs with his special. And now I actually need to stall for one turn so that my white beard will be ready. So yeah, when the dragon dies, he's gonna bind us for five turns and lower our attack for five. As his preemptive launch, the attack down is gonna lower for three. Caesar himself doesn't have a perfect barrier, but the fodder units in front of him do, which is why we have our white beard. He's gonna kill the fodder units, and he's also gonna give us a orb boost, and he's gonna boost his own attack, because there's a barrier. If you want, you can use the Akichi special first, before white beard to get a striker attack boost, but it doesn't, it's not required for a long, long time. Uh, we're also going to get a three turn burn, but it's only going to be for 2000 per hit. So you can eventually, when we get to actually hit Caesar, we can just hit away because we can survive like, we can survive all three turns almost. So yeah, first use the Neko Mamusi special. Clear away the attack down and the bind. After that, use the Whitebeard special to kill the fodder units. And for now, that's enough. Later on, you can use the Inel special to cause even more damage on Nekomamush on Caesar, I'm sorry. If you don't have Nekomamushi as a friend captain, you can re replace the crocodile or even Aokichi with the Fortnite Nekomamushi, who also reduces bind by two turns. But in this case you're always running to the risk of uh, getting that Nekom Nekomamushi binded. With our Nekomamushi captain, we are free of that worry. Finally, against Jack. We will be going to be using Treasure Map Luffy as our captain and Snake Man as our friend captain with some powerhouse crew. With Treasure Map Luffy, you have to remember to hit your perfects so that you will get the better captain ability eventually. On stage 6 of Jack, he will gain immunity for 3 turns and will also gain a damage reduction shield for 3 turns. 
and we will be using our own jack at that point. But right now it seems I need to stall out my specials. I actually need to kill these bunnies first. If you leave those bunnies alive, they will seal your ship for four turns. So we're going to be using our own Jack special, cause some damage, reduce that rainbow shield to one turn. If you want, you can pass a turn here. Jack will not do anything particularly in the first two turns. He will boost his own attack by 1.5 on his third turn. But before that, it's pretty much free sailing. We're going to be using our Snake Man special to get that beneficial orb buff going. When Jack dies, he will give us a full board of tandem and recovery orbs, and if we'll make them badly matching, he will make them count as badly matching for three turns, and he will also lock our orbs for three turns. Ideally, I would be running a Zunisha ship to get those recovery and tandem orbs into matching for powerhouse characters, but since we're on a low navigation level, it's not. It's not really needed yet. We'll get some matching orbs for the for the final fight anyway. So after the Snake Man special, just be sure to hit your three perfects to get a better orb boost for the next stage. And we will be good to go. We got a matching orb for treasure map Luffy, which will be quite enough. Now, against Jack himself on stage 7, Jack will preemptively lower our attack for 3 turns. He will also cut our health by 50%. And he also has a special interrupt in where if you uh, do any kind of orb manipulation, whether it's uh, shuffling your orbs, matching your orbs, switching your orbs, anything like that, he will clear all uh, orb beneficial enabling buffs. He will then make primary color orbs count as badly matching for five turns and he will also change your orbs into badly matching at the earliest earlier levels that's not going to be a problem because our three damage specials are going to be enough just to kill him but once they're not enough i suggest you don't use the treasure map luffy special anymore and just kill jack with your specials we're just going to be using Sanji. Next we're going to be using Neptune to get rid of that attack down. And if we don't have our Luffy or boost, we will get an uh, or boost from Neptune also. Next use our Luchi special to delay Jack and also get a conditional boost. If we're at a high, higher level, this is the point where we would normally start to attack, but since Jack doesn't have that much HP yet, we can use our treasure map Luffy to kill Jack. In my own team, I will have a double snake man team with Katakuri as my sub, but if you want, you can run a double Katakuri team too. If you're wondering about the orbs, that doesn't really matter in a double category team. 
because most of the damage with Katakuri comes from his tap timing bonus. So yeah, that was Treasure Map Kaido with free to play teams. Um, I hope you liked the video. Hit the subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, it was pretty fun making free to play teams. Haven't done those in a while, but I'll definitely make the guide for the next treasure map also. So look forward to that. Uh, I guess there's nothing more to do there. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Never, 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 never.